about blood clots, it's about asymptomatic patients. And alarm bells are ringing among some experts. The US CDC has changed its testing regime, saying that it's no longer totally necessary for people without symptoms to be tested. Models suggest half all transmissions can be traced back to people before they get sick, if they get sick at all. So it's no wonder that people are worried about this change. Well, let's talk about this with healthcare expert John Campbell, a retired nurse and academic who joins us from Carlisle, England. John, is this change in CDC guidelines dangerous? Well, the New York Times certainly seems to think so. The New York Times says this was done quietly, and it said it was done to exclude people who'd been in contact with symptomatic individuals. But if you actually go to the Centers for Disease Control website, it's slightly more nuanced than that. It's still advising people with mild symptoms to be tested. And, of course, it's still advising testing for people that are in care facilities or work in, work in uh, hospitals, for example. What it's actually saying is people who've been in close contact and the defined close contact is six feet, which of course we would call two meters or less for more than 15 minutes. What it's actually saying is they do not necessarily need to be tested. Now, they can still be tested at the discretion of their nurses or their doctors or their clinicians or according to local guidelines. So it actually is a change. It's saying it's not necessarily that they need to be tested. So it's a bit, a bit of a nuanced change there. But I still think it's a problem because this means we could have people that are in contact with uh, known cases who could then be developing the disease. And we know that a large proportion of people are asymptomatic initially. Now, about half of those people that are asymptomatic initially will go on to become symptomatic eventually. But it's interesting, the latest data is showing that people are most infectious immediately before they become symptomatic and in the first day after they become symptomatic. And of course, the symptoms can start off as being fairly mild. So what this means is we could have a lot of people going around who are shedding large amounts of the virus that we don't know about if we don't test them just in case they've been exposed. John, you're talking well about. That, I think the, 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 if I can jump yeah, in there, you're talking about a large amount of people. I've I've read studies that show up to half yeah. those infected with COVID-19 show no or hardly any symptoms. Doesn't that make this fight almost impossible? Yeah, well, it makes it more difficult. You're absolutely right. The latest meta-analysis shows about 47% 40, of people might not develop symptoms. But about half of those will go on to develop symptoms over time. But many will have a mild disease. But it is, you're right, it's very difficult. It's very hard to fight an invisible enemy. And the only way we can make this enemy visible is by reporting symptoms or by testing. We need to test people. And as well as that, we now know, as well as testing, there's various other things we can test for in the blood to screen people as well, that it would be a good idea to do. Anything we can do to make this virus more visible is going to help. Then we can target our isolation, mm -hmm. we can target quarantines, and then we can be much more specific and targeted in the way we're attacking this virus. But John, Without tell me, testing, how, how do we even invisible. know how many asymptomatic people there are out there uh, if they haven't seen a yeah. doctor, if we don't have that medical data, if there aren't even enough tests to do the mass testing you're talking about. It's remarkably difficult. You can sometimes, you can tell to an extent by the amount of people that become symptomatic in the future and the amount of people that become hospitalised and even the amount of people die. But the main way that we do this is with antigen surveys. Now, different countries do this in different ways, but in the UK, the Office for National Statistics will test about a thousand random households throughout the country for the antigen. And because they're testing randomly in random areas, they can extrapolate that up to the whole population. So it is quite possible to give fairly accurate estimates or, or really mm -hmm. very accurate estimates of how many people in the community are infected at any one time. And thankfully in the UK and Germany at the moment, that's relatively low. In Spain, it's much higher and it's also climbing quite rapidly in France as well. John, what about age? Does it play a role when it comes to being asymptomatic? Mm, it, it does. Um, it's about 27% of children are genuinely asymptomatic and only about 16% of adults remain asymptomatic. Now, many more, it has to be stressed, many more are asymptomatic for a period of time and then become symptomatic. But it remains the case that more children remain completely asymptomatic than adults, 27% of children and about 16% of adults. But just because they're asymptomatic doesn't mean things are going on in the body. If you do x-rays and 
CT scans, you can actually see changes that are going on. You can see changes in the blood. So even though people aren't feeling symptoms, there can still be physiological change. But the proportion of people that are completely asymptomatic is smaller than we did think at one time. John, great to get you on the show today. John Campbell, healthcare expert, coming to us pleasure, from ben. Carlisle in England. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Some blame young people for the resurgence of the coronavirus.